My biggest inspiration was my biology teacher when I was growing up in Kenya, surrounded by butterflies and cichlid fish in Lake Victoria. Later, I was fortunate to find myself in Cambridge at a pivotal time in the development of new ideas and mammalian development. And I was supervised by Robert Edwards. My work on mammalian development was driven by pure curiosity. I was interested to know whether eggs which contain just maternal chromosomes without any contribution from paternal chromosomes could develop normally. This is the case in some organisms, but we found that this, this is not the case in mammals. And the reasons for this turned out to be very surprising and exciting. This discovery provided the impetus for the whole field of epigenetics, which is a study of heritable changes in gene function without changes in the genetic code. What we found in our experiment was that the mammalian development requires fixed numbers of chromosomes. But it's not just the numbers that are important, because what we found was that doubling up of either maternal or the paternal chromosomes did not lead to a normal development. Contributions from both maternal and paternal chromosomes were required for normal development. It suggested that there was some extra information that was coming in from parental chromosomes, which was dependent on the memory of their origin. And we call this phenomenon genomic imprinting. Further work revealed that the nature of these imprints comes in the form of a chemical tag, which is a methyl tag attached to the DNA, which influences gene expression without alteration in the actual sequence of the gene itself. Our subsequent research showed that these chemical tags are first erased in early germ cells, which are the precursors of sperm and eggs, and then subsequently reintroduced in developing gametes. And at fertilization, they are introduced into the egg and then inherited by the developing embryo. And transmitted through to adulthood. Importantly, we found that disruption of imprinted genes have consequences and cause human diseases, such as effects on behavior, obesity, cancers, diabetes. There are two examples of diseases which are caused by disruption of imprints. They're called Prader-Willi and Angelman syndromes. The enzymes involved in the introduction of epigenetic modifications and erasure are primary targets now for therapeutic discoveries to treat many of the human diseases. Here at the Gerd Institute, I became interested in the development of the germline itself. We have found that primordial germ cells are among the first to emerge after the embryo implants. We have gone on to identify the key genes that are involved in the development of the early germ cells our aim is to study whether epigenetic marks, apart from imprints, are transmitted by the germline to subsequent generation. And the germline being immortal might teach us about age and age-related diseases, which will be important for generations to come.